opening up uh, Paris's kennel here. We're gonna let her out and take her out for a little outing. Just showing here that we, we should be able to open up her kennel here and she shouldn't be ready to rush out, right? She might be excited, she might be happy to see us, but she, able, she should be able to control that excitement enough to hang out within her kennel without direction from us. I really like that she just laid down there too. That's beautiful to see that. So it's one of those things where if we come up to the kennel and the dog is overexcited, there's a few options that we have to settle that down. We can we can kind of wait it out at the kennel door, right? Something I will practice frequently is starting to open the kennel door and if they start to get too excited, even if that just means like, you know, breaking it down or breaking that sit command if you give them that command. I'll often do this at first without any commands though, just to make sure it's very, very clear what we're going after here, which is the behavior of just not rushing out the kennel, right? So without using any commands even, you can come up to the door and start to open it, right? Start to open the door. And if you start to open that door and the dog already starts to rush out of that, out of the kennel. So maybe they're standing there, tail is wagging and they're, they're getting ready to rush out. You open that door and their nose starts to press out through that door. You're gonna close it, you're gonna say no, and you're gonna close that door. Then you're gonna open it again, say no, and close that door. Every single time that dog tries to push their nose out, you're gonna say no, and then close that door. Even if you have to close it, you know, on their nose, right? Don't obviously slam their nose in there, but just close it and push their nose back in there. And what you're effectively doing is using this crate door as a form of spatial pressure, right? So you're closing that door and they're backing away from that pressure, right? They might not back away at first. You might have to actually kind of push them back, right? And then once they're back in there, you're gonna to start to open that door again. And each time, no, close the door, right? What you should see after a few repetitions, you know, maybe five to 10, depending on the dog, Sometimes it can take a little while, right? You gotta be persistent with this stuff. But you're gonna close that door and you, what you should see is you'll start to open that door and the dog will sit there and look at you like, hey, what do you want me to do, right? They'll look at you, they'll look at you like, hey, what do you want me to do here to get out? And you'll open that door. And once you have that behavior, even if they're standing there, right? As long as they're looking at you and maintaining that position, I would let them out, right? Put the leash on let them out, right? And then slowly building on that, right? So you're gonna increase that criteria from now they're standing there and you're just gonna wait there with the door open. And if they start to move out, you're gonna say, no, close that door again, right? You should see quickly that they actually just sit or they'll even lay down, right? And you won't even have to ask for that command nine times out of 10, right? They'll just automatically do that. Oftentimes with just that spatial pressure, they'll go into a sit, you'll close that door, you'll open it. And then you'll, what you'll see there, right, is they'll be sitting there, the dog will be sitting there, and you'll say, you'll say, if they start to move, you can say no, and they'll sit back down even without the door closing, right? And then you've added some meaning to your no command, right? Just by using this door as a form of spatial pressure, right? Now, once you have that sit, you have that eye contact, ideally, that's when you give your release cue, which is your break command, and you let them come out, right, with a leash on, right? Now, if you're not using the door with this, right, like maybe you've got a dog that's on the e-collar already that we've already worked with the e-collar, that's where instead of using that door or with in combination with that door, you can say no and apply e-collar pressure as well, right? So each time the dog gets too excited, no, correction on the e-collar, they'll settle back down, right? No, correction on the e-collar, they settle back down. Once they're settled, then you release them, right? Now here with Paris, right? She has that same, she did have that issue previously, right? Where she really got excited to rush at that kennel and uh, you run on out here and just slam through the kennel, right? And she still does it once in a while, right? So this is really, really good to see this, this laying down behavior right here. Um, so like I said, when we open this door with her, we're gonna open the door all the way up, have our e-collar ready. E-collar's already on her in this situation. We've already uh, put it on her today. We're gonna stand up and back away, but if she gets up now, what we'll do is we'll say no, tap on the e-collar, right? But we might add ourselves as that form of spatial pressure. So I might say no and step in towards the dog like this, right? Just do like a half step towards them, backing away. And with a dog like Paris, especially when she comes home, you're gonna add some distractions to this exercise to make it a bit of a training exercise, right? So some things I like to do, and again, keeping in mind, the dog does not release unless you give a couple options, right? A release cue, which is the break command, or a recall command, right? Those are the two options really for leaving that crate, right? I like to recall the dog to me out of the crate, which I'll show you how to do here with Paris. But like I said, I like to throw some distractions in these situations, especially the first few days maybe at home, so you can really get the dog used to the idea that they have to respect this threshold with the crate, even at home, right? And so what we'll do is we'll kind of like bang down a lot of times, right? Get down low, you can make some kissy noises, even some baby talk without saying her name or without saying one of those two commands we talked about. 
Um, but really anything else is on the table, right? Because she's not allowed to break no matter what else is going on, right? So that's where you could have, you know, the kids run around past the kennel, correcting her for attempting to come out of that kennel without your permission, right? Without that command, right? You can throw some toys down, get a squeaky toy, use some food, whatever you want to do. I like to like knock on the walls and the door and stuff, right? Using all those moments to correct, say no, correct. If she steps out of that kennel, you can guide her back into that kennel too. Maybe you'll have the leash on her in this situation, depending on where she's at. But again, just using that as a training opportunity, even just right here, letting her out of the kennel door. Such an important moment to control your dog's excitement. And it's one of the things I talk about with my clients all the time when we discuss crate training is using that crate at night. So your first interaction in the morning is one of controlling that state of mind and controlling that threshold and essentially setting yourself up in a, in a position of leadership, right? Because you're the one that's controlling access through that threshold, right? So keeping that in mind, right? So letting them out of the crate, that's a big resource. We can take control of that and really use it to manipulate behavior and get behavior we want to see more of instead of less of, which like I said, is over excitement at the kennel door, right? You do not want to encourage that dog to be overexcited and then release from that kennel in that overexcited mind. You're, you're basically letting them know that that's where you want them to be and that's where they're going to stay the rest of the day. So like I said, using that kennel, using these threshold exercises, especially first thing in the morning or when you get home from work, etc., are great ways to let your dog know where you want them to be mentally, right? So keep that in mind. Uh, now we're going to recall Paris out. Paris, come. That's going to be our tone button. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. She's going to come over here to us and then we're going to ask for a sit. Good girl. Hello. And then we can move through the house with her, right? We're going to heal her through the house. We're going to bring her up for a walk here. So we'll get on with that. Good girl. Break.